Steve, I think you will catch this one live. Steve is the only one tuning in right now. Way to go, Steve. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> We're actually, we'll probably repeat this because not that many people are tuning in. We're actually done at Waterford. Uh, we did not get as many lives done from, we wanted to do some lives from the distillery. Didn't happen. Didn't happen. They just, I mean, they were running us. Right. They had a schedule, or not a schedule, but they kind of had yeah, a, a little bit. But a we schedule got for us. and Time at the farm mm -hmm. uh, with Duggan. Um, time at the warehouse. The warehouse time in the, we just left. Time in the cellars, time in the tasting room, the tours. Right. The regular, yep. So. Kind of the two tours. We did just this morning. We got to sit down with Mark Rainier, Rainier. Some folks pronounce his last name different. We didn't ask him. We've heard exactly both how. Rain. Yeah, we didn't ask him. We've heard Rainier and Rainier. So actually, like the, actually, the, the distillery to. people call him Rainier. Right, but they so. also say tree for the number three. <laughs> that is true. And we were they were teasing us because they're like we don't use H's around here. <laughs> So if we're gonna we're we're gonna meet you at three o'clock, it's like okay, we'll meet <laughs> you at three o'clock. So, um, all right. So we're we've been taken out to Dublin near the airport so that we can get out of here early in the morning and fly over to Glasgow mm -hmm. for the second half. This is going to be a live where we're doing more of a wrap up, kind of of what we've done. Mm -hmm. We have filmed a lot of different things. Uh, we'll edit those. Those will come out separately. We're going to do even some lead-ins, and uh, but this will be almost kind of a, a sneak peek of what's to come, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> so, um, if I were to let me run through a general breakdown. So we get here. Um, uh, we're picked up by Grace. Um, when we get to the distillery the next day, we get a general tour of the grounds, kind of the. There's a lot of things that could even maybe in the future be set up as a historical tour. Um, some architecture that goes back, what, a couple hundred years, I think, mm -hmm. is what they said? 1780, 1790. Right. Um, and then we actually went into the complete reverse of that, which is the high-tech um, distillery, brewery, um, at what used to be the Guinness, Diageo's Guinness, mm -hmm brewery and you're talking uh, a very high tech not as many people present because everything's done um, with computers let's move forward through that we then end up getting to along this path this is multiple days that i'm going to discuss we're in like a lab tasting room um, we get to see one of the things I liked where there there were this row of books at a very high shelf. I was the only one that could reach them without well they any offered, grace. They offered you a job, right? I could be the the getter of books on high shelves because Ned did have a step stool in there to help him get to the shelves. Yes. Bart did not need the well. Step these stool. look like yearbooks, but they're they call them passports, and the mm -hmm. passport you pull it off for a year with a farmer's name on it, and it does these things, what do they call uh, the L-I-P-I-S or something? There's yeah, this, lips, it's an EU, yeah, an EU standard for uh, soil types and what kind of fertilizers are you, it's basically just a really, I mean, a picture of the farmer that owns the land, a plot, photos of the land, goes into a lot of detail. And then there are samples uh, you've got new make that's in there. So you could say, hey, I want to see uh, Duggan's uh, particular plot, and I want to try some new make, and I want the new make that was distilled in 2017, and you could do that. So uh, we tried that. We tried some different uh, woods that we'll go into that then it's also put in high-quality wood. So the idea is a high-quality grain is distilled slowly to preserve uh, the flavors and then it's going to be put into wood uh, we later get to go down into the cellars where you can try the coolest name ever this has to be the best name mm -hmm. blood tubs mm -hmm. there's blood tubs which are small how many gallons nine? about nine they were 30 30 liter or 35 liter so about mm -hmm. nine gallon nine gallon um, <coughs> barrels basically that are set down there uh, so they can be, because of the higher volume uh, contact to the wood, you're going to get a little bit more of a, 
aging process there. And it's just used to kind of, so they can go down and, and test something. It's not going to be the exact same things out at the warehouse. Just give them a ballpark. So we got to go down there. And then later we're out at a farm. We're actually out at uh, Seamus Duggan's farm. I like Seamus. That's my fir the first Seamus I've ever met. Yeah. Um, and we get to see some barley growing, meet Seamus. We filmed some of that. We then go in and we get a surprise. So Ned, the head distiller is there and he's brought grain, or sorry, not grain. He's brought, um, uh, it's not called whiskey yet because it hasn't reached the, some of it, it hadn't reached the three year yeah. mark, but he's brought spirit that's just from With, the barley from Seamus's farm. Yeah. Well, I did clarify that because I've heard like um, Compass Box with Stranger and Stranger mixed in a one-year-old spirit. Mm -hmm. So it can't be called a whiskey now. Right. I, I had thought like in the United States, if you age it one day, it's a whiskey. So, you know, you age it in wood, it becomes whiskey. But they do have the three-year purposes. Yeah. yeah. Three-year rule. <clears throat> well, I think American whiskey as long as it's aged one day. Right. But then they have their straight bourbon, yeah. which has to be two years and all that. Yeah. So it's just spirit. But here's what was extremely cool. There was four different first fills. So there's four sample bottles like this with first fill from, from uh, his farm. Then four different um, uh, virgin oaks, four different premium French, and then four different VPN, and I can never remember. Um, it's a French. It's um, Vu something natural. <laughs> VDN. It's VDN. VDN. Vu something natural. Basically, it's fortified wines, ports, brandies, and things that the barrels have been. So you've got all these there, and uh, we've captured this as well, although we had some focusing problems. You'll see later. And then we're each encouraged to make our own um blend our own kind of vatted malt although it's still just spirit stage so we played around with that and that was good fun so um enough of that what are some of the questions coming in well now um did i was so i was answering some questions there while you were talking you said that was with the farmer with seamus that we did that they brought and it was from his farm yes did you go into all yeah, that yep so we did our own blend and we got to keep our bottle of that um mm -hmm. the lights kind of Yep. blinding it out there but bart created his uh blend i created mine and then we got to we tasted everybody's and blend and kind of rated which ones we like the most actually scott and i both like your blend better well blind yeah we, yeah but, we did we did a little blind um, that will be coming up and in of a, course ned ned said hey um if, if he was doing this this was unscientific this was just kind of by by eye, by taste, by nose, add a little water. So this was not a scientific method. It was a fun method. He further explains, hey, if we were doing this for real, it would be much more scientific and we would even let things sit out or be blended and then married over time. And then we would come back to it. So this was more of a fun exercise and it was fun for you and I. It was real good fun for Seamus. Yeah. Uh, Ned kept saying, you know, you can add a little water there. He's like, nope, mm -mm. <laughs> there's no water in this blend. Uh, oh. Chris Sneller is answering. It's Vin do D O U X uh, natural. Perfect. So now today I will tell you, so this was, this was about two and a half years old. Uh, the youth still is showing a little bit. Now we tasted some stuff in the warehouse today. That's about three and a half years old and it's aging magnificently mm -hmm. really surprised. And of course they don't want to put anything out for still another two to three years. They're I'm just, they're going to be putting out some good stuff. Right. Yep. So, uh, Oh, they didn't put the, these were all around 70, 71% ABV. Well, but then like we added water right there. So, uh, I think mine was brought down to about 50 probably because mm -hmm. I really, yep. Notice this. No, he just wrote that on there. So we can continue on. So <laughs> in case anybody's going to check. What other questions are coming in? 
Uh, Mark Goins likes our fat, fancy glasses. Yeah. They we didn't have a choice. Here. Did you rinse them out before we used them? Clean. Anything on here? Guaranteed it's clean. Uh, Vaughn Vincent says, you guys look not too hungover so far. Good work. Yeah, we, I mean, it's actually been pretty light. Mm -hmm. Tuesday afternoon was probably the worst with samples because we were in the the sample tasting room for a while. And then went to the cellar and got. I would uh, say it was the best samples. Well, as, we never no, pushed it though. No, I'm, I'm saying as be, as far as being hung, possibly being too hungover. Mm -mm. That was the most alcohol I've drank mm. here. All right, cool. You've had more? No, I'm just saying I got nowhere even close. Well, I know. Them. No, All I'm right. just saying that was the most the most I've drank at one sitting was during that day. Got it. Okay. Sure. Hazmat. So, mm -hmm. um, on the 70. Uh, we did an interview with Mark. Uh, Mark's great because he has so much information. One, two, three, four questions, and he is will just go down the road. Uh, we talked to him about Grenada, where he's got, uh, he's working on, he's building, well, he's doing everything. He's building a distillery there. He's having to, uh, do all the uh, farming or control or get a team to do the sugar cane. So renegade rum. So they're hoping to have something ready in Granada. 2022. Granada, Grenada, Grenada. Uh, Ever, tomato. Everyone says, did you find the dingle Irish whiskey expression? We, I did see that in a bar or two. Did not get a chance to try it. Nope. Tried some uh, yellow spot. Did they did they win us over on the existence of terroir in whiskey? Sarah Campos. Asks. I was fully won yeah. over. Yeah, yeah. they uh, we did. We tried a whole line, and we can pick any new make off the shelf or anything. Um, but uh, what was very interesting was I think we had about six different new makes out and different farms, and they had a biodynamic uh, new make there, and. So Ned had said right off the bat, hey, don't, don't be trying, you know, it's new make, so I'm not asking you to pick out like this flavor note or that. Just see if you can tell differences between these. That's really the thing to look at. The biodynamic was a, an extreme difference in new make. It was extremely soft and smooth, and it was at a really high proof. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I mean, I kind of, I, I like sipping on some new make now and then anyway. But I have clear differences. Um, uh, we even took some right off the the still, so that we tried. And uh, so yeah, there there are definitely differences. Um, I won't go into great detail because Seamus does it best by himself. But he says when Mark even came to him and the farmers with the idea, he thought he's crazy. Uh, grain's grain. It doesn't matter where you get it from. And he says, as the project's gone on and he's tasted his own grain from his own farm, uh, and he's tasted grain from different fields in his own farm, and he picks up differences, it blew his mind. And then there was like a, a heartfelt pride when he said, you know, I used to have my grain and it would just be dumped off and delivered. I didn't know if it was in a, a cow or beer or whiskey or whatever. And here he is sampling his own grain as it's aging so um yeah there's differences mm -hmm. i think i believed it though before we came yeah just, i mean just based on what they wanted to do and what and and, and mark's experience in the field I, right I, I don't think i was coming here thinking oh it's got to be proved to me i was curious to see what are the differences and they do run their still really really slow um, they were talking about how we could hit an X amount of volume, but if we pushed it at that volume, you would lose a lot of flavor. So uh, Park Bear says, what is the most exciting thing or event you have left on the trip? So we've had a blast in Ireland. This is our first time over, but we are heading to Scotland tomorrow for a week and we got a lot lined up, a lot planned there. So really the whole week is the meeting, the gathering with the fans is what I look forward to. I'm also looking for, well, you're right, because then there's the SMWS, uh, Ben Dietrich, the Bolts, and then there's headed to Isla and the Highlands. So, yeah, there's a lot. Mm -hmm. That'll be fun, too. So, um, 
you know, this is the part, the part that we finished was I definitely wanted to make sure we were capturing good video while we were here. We were getting good information. We were learning along the way. And I've, I think, I mean, this is just my point of view. I think we've achieved all that. We met great people. We had a good time. I think we got good, uh, some good filming done and, and our journey or, or my journey, uh, and learning more definitely has happened. Mm -hmm. When the, the, the long flight over for this big body would have been the worst part and no sleep for 32 hours and missing our flight, standing in the yeah. customs line for three hours. The customs line in Heathrow was brutal. Them not sit, getting our suitcases on the flight. Yeah, that was all fun. Yeah. Yeah. That part was brutal. Well taken though, considering we had very little or no sleep at all. Yeah. So, but I mean, that's just part of the travel. So uh, Everwind says, what are your impressions of the Irish whiskey mojo versus scotch? Now, and I know uh, Waterford is going to be watching. This is, uh, it's really a lot of the Scotch profile. They're doing a lot of, he's doing a lot of things, but doing it in Ireland. He's using Irish barley. It's being made here. He's not triple distilling. Right. He is not a single pot stilling. He's using all malted barley. Single malt. So, yeah, it's a single malt. And then you'll basically end up... Um, it's already out. He's talked about, uh, he wants to end up putting out individual bottles from an individual farmer, probably two of different taste profiles. He doesn't know what those will be or, or which farm or whatever, but he wants to do that in order to let people taste and see the difference themselves. Um, and then what was really really interesting where the permutations permutations that are going to be out there to play with because you've got multiple farms multiple farmers that grain maybe over multiple years but also then put in different wood so you end up with these permutations that can just you know a little bit of this a little bit more of that none of this a lot of that and you can end up with all different types of ingredients. It'd be like a top line chef that has top line organic ingredients that he or she can then pull in and play with and make a batted malt, a single malt from a single distillery. So that part's cool. Uh, Everwin and, and then Everwin states, i.e. philosophy, what's important, how they approach whiskey making and what's important to them. Uh, to Mark, it starts with uh, barley. Well, their moto, moto, barley. motto, barley, barley is, is king. king. Provenance is all. Right. Start with good whiskey or good barley, make good whiskey and put it in good wood. Either one can sacrifice the other. If wood. you have good wood, right. but crappy whiskey, it's not going to help it. Right. If you have good whiskey, but crappy wood, you're right. going to hurt the whiskey. And he talks about how high quality the Irish barley is anyway. Mm -hmm. And then they have high standards for then the type of barley they are taking. So you already have good quality Irish barley. And then they're looking at multiple facets on, hey, it has to hit these standards for us to even accept it in. And then they even have, uh, he used kind of the soccer league thing where they have uh, 72, 80 some plus farms that have been involved, but only 40 are going to be selected out and distilled. And then out of that, they even pick their own kind of favorites or who comes back in or does someone new, does someone drop out? Uh, that was even neat. That was really neat. Seamus, Seamus, uh, they give out like a trophy each year and he wants, he wants the trophy. He was, he was poking at him. Like, didn't you get a trophy? Cause he knows he didn't get a trophy. I was yet. like, is this the farmer that wants the trophy? <laughs> was this him? Is this what you said? Did he get it last year? Yes. No. Okay. Yep. Yep. And then he's teasing <clears throat> about like what, uh, I know we call them counties, but what farming area he's in. Didn't you say Kilkenny? But, well, I asked. Yeah, I did. Yeah, but he's in a leash. Yeah. Yeah. It was just funny. neighboring. Yeah. yeah. Cause it'd be like, if you're a Bronco fan and I were to say, are you an Oakland Raiders fan? And Ooh. Like, what? <laughs> uh sarah we can't say what whiskeys we brought for roy it's a surprise and we actually learned that so i was slagging on uh seamus a little bit well, we as, that. Slagging. uh has dons has dan's says he says not slagging waterford but galway Kerry, cork dub and kilkenny have a little more going on in my opinion right now yeah because west west waterford isn't putting anything out yet you'll be surprised though i think i mean i 
everybody has their own palate. They have their own taste buds, but Waterford is going to be putting out some good stuff. Mm -hmm. Quality uh, and in, you will, quality out. I don't care what, I mean, what it is. You'll, Food, be, you'll be able to whiskey. see differences. Yeah. We, there are differences in the white, in the new make spirit. Right. They showed us, they were just in, they were, we were there while one batch was being distilled <clears throat> and we got to taste that coming right out of the shoot. Right. They had, um, white, well, they had new make spirit of all but of right them. up there. They had a biodynamic the biodynamic uh, and, white dog or, and what surprised me though, too, is there's three farms towards the Southern part that they use. And they said that they, they put off more tropical notes and even in their new make spirit, I can't remember the three farms, but it was already had so many hints of a good Irish whiskey a new make. Yeah. Yeah. At, and on, then on a new make spirit. We, when we're at the warehouse, we're seeing the different wood, the barrels that they're, that they're bringing in the casks. And, you know, I mean, they're, they're really bringing in good wood. So, you know, I mean, you got to see how that's all going to work out, how it's going to age. Um, and I'll get this wrong, but the comment was they're spending a lot of time on making sure that the, the raw ingredient is good which is 100% of your whiskey is going to be the barley as the raw ingredient. But 100% of that whiskey, once it's put in the wood, is going to be 100% influenced by the wood that it's in. So, I mean, you've got that wood is going to influence all the whiskey in that, in that barrel and that cask. What's neat is, so again, coming back to it, if it's, you can make all these different permutations that you can play with. So you've got ingredients that you can play with in order to then come in and make that vatted malt. So that single malt from a single distillery, but playing with different farms, different woods, same farm, different woods, and being able to do that. I think they're going to be able to put some things out that are going to be pretty, pretty good. Mm -hmm. So, well, and uh, so, uh, I think it's Haas Dons, I'm, I'm guessing. Are they positioning themselves against IDL? I don't know what IDL is. Seems like a big distillery. Dingle is artisan, so they, they never are looking to compete on the same level. No, Waterford is mass producing. They're trying to hit Farm a by farm. They yeah. did hit a million liters the first year. Well, just shy. It was, was like it just 690 or, or I mean, eight, 900 and oh. 60,000 liters, I think. Yeah. But Something they, like that. It they've was just got, shy of a million liters. They've got four warehouses full Year of one. whiskey aging now. Right. And they're building two more warehouses already. Right. I think they said 12,000 casks. Was that right? I can't remember. <clears throat> so, but well, like I said, I mean, here's the nice thing is, even when we made our own little blends, our unscientific blends, those came out different. And then it was funny. I had a little bit left in the little glass that I was making the blend as I poured in. Um, so Ned grabs it and dumps that into what he had left over. He takes a sip, hands it to me. I tried that and I said, wow, this is better than the blend I made. What, you know, so whatever little thing he did and joined with mine, I was like, that's, that's really good. I wish I'd had a whole bottle of whatever that was. Now, again, we weren't doing anything scientific at all. We were just playing with the whiskey, which I like. And the ability to just go in there and play with that whiskey. And, and it's the farmer's grain and the joy from seeing that. So now I will, I will tell you though, too, um, my wife has started to get into Irish whiskeys, but I don't think she We've would like this profile. That. We've never heard that. I don't think she would like this profile. Stronger. The, just being the single malt. Okay. And not being a part of her draw, I think, is the triple distillation. Um, okay, pot still kind of triple mm -hmm. smooth. single pot still. Okay, yeah. So I think it's a little bit different than your standard Irish whiskey. Hmm. Uh, let's see. So what Donner Pass reminds me of what Brooklady is doing uh, with specific farms. Yeah, well, that's exactly Mark talked about that. Uh, he said he'd reached out to the farmers in Isla and. Uh, told them that he wanted to get some grain when he was at Brook Lottie. He had a great story uh, about, you know, one of the farmers coming up to him kind of, I think probably near the end when, near when he left Brook Lottie, just telling him that by making the grain and that he personally knew the grain that he made was in 
the bottle that it kind of made farming fun for him again. And that the farmers themselves on Isla started working together, helping each other bring in uh, the harvest if the rain was coming and things like that. They knew it's exactly what Seamus said. He said he never knew where his grain went. He didn't care. And he thought this whole thing was crazy, that there is no difference from barley from farm to farm. And then as he did it himself and tasted it, he found out there was difference in his barley from plot to plot, field to field in his own farm. Mm -hmm. That was neat. So, and, and Seamus was like, no bullshit. He was just, he was, uh, I mean, you even said, this is like a farmer that I knew when I lived in Western Kansas. He's just, uh, just this, he happens to have an Irish accent and live in Ireland. Yeah. We had to <laughs> replay what he said in slow motion. So we could understand it. <laughs> So, no, that was neat. Uh, let's see. Anything else coming in that I missed there? Uh, George Kaplan says, that's a lot of whiskey. Sounds interesting with the farm approach. Yeah, and that's exactly what uh, Mark is going for. And I don't know if you said, uh, with Brooklotti, Mark started that with Brooklotti. Right. Doing the individual farms. Right. Yeah. And we've seen that. Uh, Amy wants to know if it's as beautiful as they say here. It's real. It's real nice. Now we got lucky. We've been lucky. No rain. No rain. Why we've been it, here. It's been mostly sunny. Yeah. Uh, a little bit the, overcast. In the 60 degree temperatures. Nice and green. Yeah. Um, but like you pointed out, there's some areas that it reminded you of, of some different areas. Yeah. There's some nice hilly mm -hmm. regions. Mm -hmm. Once we got off. Uh, the beaten. So we flew into Dublin, drove straight down kind of their interstate to Waterford. Uneventful, un, you know, scenery wise. It was when we Highway. went to the farm um, and got off the beaten yeah. path, got and, onto and the on two these, lane roads. Yeah, or one lane. Roads and every, everything's lined, you know, with the rock walls right. um, or and bushes. And that was definitely different from Kansas. Trees. Kansas is so wide open, you can look for a mm -hmm. quarter mile. Yeah. Well, here there's hedgerows and things lining the road. There's barely, I was thinking at one point, there's nowhere to pull off if you got a flat and change it. What do you do? You probably got to roll down to a street or a driveway and get off the road. So I thought there's no shoulder here at all, but you can't see. You can't see that field. So what's cool is you'll see some, some mountains, I don't know, hills off to one side. We did get down to the southern coast. Uh, it was cold, it was chilly, and there were a bunch of guys or students with wetsuits going out with surfboards. Yeah, I know. Cool. We were like, well, look at those guys. So, so that was fun. Yeah. Oh, it's a, it's, it's definitely a gorgeous place. Uh, I find uh, the people are awesome. So much fun. And sometimes I didn't know what was said. Yeah. We <laughs> had to say, ask say for that again. clarification on a lot of things. <laughs> I didn't get that. And uh, they'd say, "Oh, you're not from around here." We do, we do. I do know if they say, "We'll pick you up at half a ten. Half and ten. What that means? Nine thirty. No, ten thirty. Ten thirty. So blow that all the time. <laughs> half and ten. Half and ten. It's ten thirty. And I kept wanting to say, "Well, half a ten. What nine thirty? So, yeah, like thirty minutes after." Yeah, Whiskey Throttle says the people here are very helpful and friendly, and they'd help you change your tire. You I bet. think so. Oh, yeah. they would. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody was great. A lot of good driving, friendly driving. We were just commenting on the way here. You know, uh, uh, Grace is letting letting the folks get out. Other people are there. The guy's waving. It's very much kind of what we're used to in the Midwest, whereas I've been to East Coast, and it's more like a, it's like a road warrior to get out on a, you know, make a turn sometimes. So everybody was nice. You can always, I don't know, I can always tell a lot by looking at the driving. Yeah, Vaughn Fenson says it's half and tree. <laughs> exactly. <That's> 330. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, did we get any chance to try any local beers? We did. Well, we probably had a chance. I don't know if they're necessarily local. Yeah, I guess they're just Irish beers. Uh, we did hit a pub one night before dinner and had, uh, I had an Irish red ale, Smithix. Yeah. I had that last night. Yeah, no, I, I think that's no, that's I got a bigger totally one. Totally different too. though. At the other at the pub, I just said, "Give me something darker," and I got served up something darker. I don't even yeah. know what it was. Yeah, I did not try. Someone had asked earlier if we had any of the local Guinness. I did not try Guinness here, which yeah. I suppose we could at the pub here. We're in Dublin uh, tonight, so maybe I'll yeah. try a Guinness. See if it's any different than Guinness, Guinness in the states. Yeah, get it right from the tap. 
So we may, I know Roy is going live later. I don't know. And he had said something about possibly joining him. We might try. That'll be later tonight. Nine o'clock, nine. What's he go live at? 345. That'd be 945 local time. Bart might be asleep by then. Possible. <laughs> I like to get my beauty rest. <laughs> you need more. I do, especially when we're getting up at five. <laughs> yeah, we gotta get up early. Well, no, we gotta leave. Sorry, we gotta leave. We gotta be getting on the four, shuttle probably about five. four yeah. o'clock. Get up. Right, half and tree. Oh, wow. <laughs> I just saw that farm to table. Yeah, a lot of times I was like, uh, "What'd you say?" Right. What? And even took it two or three times to. I'm sure they were doing the same with us. Like, well, I, my, my other favorite it? part was we we're eating with uh, Ned and Grace, and uh, there was a like a tourist bus that showed up at the hotel we're at with a bunch of Americans mm -hmm. and Scott just referenced offhand that we, we rode the elevator with some ladies or something. We rode, we, mm -hmm. we were on the elevator and rode with yeah. some ladies, I think. And we both, rode, I can't remember exactly. We rode, up with yeah, some ladies. we rode up with some ladies and both Grace and Ned were like, what? Ooh, ooh, like, they gave it a little. They were like, what? What did we say there? And, uh, yeah, if you if you I don't even know what it was. if you're if you if you went and had a ride, that's like sex. So yeah, we were like we did not do that. No, <laughs> we just rode the elevator. So but yeah, it was one of those. As soon as he said it, and they both like I was like, whoa, what did he say? So well, Claire the third says half a ten is five. Their math is off, right? Which is that's, what someone the whole they had said confusing. that to somebody yeah. and it confused them, right? Uh, we did not sign any barrels for a future STD edition. That would have been cool. I would. We well, it probably cost a lot of money too. I'm sure. <laughs> As we should have bought. We did now. try. There was one today about three and a half years old. That's sherry cast. Yeah. That is going to be good. See, I like the that first first fill first fill one. X bourbon. That one was really good too. That was really good. Yeah, they could probably. It was close to being bottled oh, right yeah. now. But they're waiting. They're going to wait a couple of years. Wait. Yeah, it was. I think they're hoping they 2021. Right. Well, they could have legally year. bottled that one and it was good. Mm -hmm. So, and yeah, I was like, holy moly. So, and there was one in there that it had a little bit more. Yeah, let me the, have a little bit of yours now and you have a little bit of mine. Okay. Here, just. These are, if you came in, yep, if you came in late. Poor yours. We, uh. So they had, um, we went out, we met one of the farmers that grows barley for them, Shane Sheamus. Duggan. Seamus. Seamus Duggan. Just mine. Uh, and he brought, they're using four different barrel types, categories. They brought sample bottles like this from, just from Seamus's farm. Yep. His it was barley. about two and a half years old, so it's not whiskey yet in Ireland. Uh, but you had ex bourbon casks, four of them. You had virgin casks, four of them. Um, French premium, French premium, four of them. And then what the, they call VDN, Vendu Natural, four of which them. are uh, fortified wine casks. Right. And so you had you had that many out there. So you had the sixteen, and and then you blended them and and into to create whatever, your into to create the, this at fifty percent. I put no VDN in mine. I wasn't, it was a little astringent. It uh, was for me. Actually. Yeah, I thought so too. I used very little. Mm. Mm. Yours is like saltier. Mm. A lot more. What'd you use mainly? Um, first used, fill? Well, I used a lot of virgin and first fill. Mm. So. And I only put a touch of the French premium in with no VDN at all. They had this, uh, some French premium when we were in their lab area, testing area, where the, it was, it was like a rose. It was a pink. It was really cool looking. So. Oh, yeah. And I got to try one of their Marsala casks, which was mm. pretty good individual wise mm -hmm. as well. He was getting real excited on one of the French premiums and thought he picked up some Marcella. Yeah. And uh, 
And he was asked if he liked that. He said, I love that. And they, they went and whoosh, hair Pulled tried that a sample. One. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. So that was neat. Uh, the whiskey friend, Alan, says he's looking forward to catching up with us on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Good. Be happy to meet up with you and see you. Can't wait. Uh, are we going to the pot still in Glasgow? We are going to the Bon Accord Saturday night. Right. So, but should we wrap it up? We should wrap it up. It's eleven thirty back home. You Drink it in the morning. Blend there, yours is good too. Yeah. When we all were, were blindly, I picked his blend. <laughs> I actually thought it was mine. <laughs> I picked his blend, so it's a good blend. It's got a little bit of a, I got a little more wood influence from yours. So, all right, scotch it, you scotch gods. Thanks to everybody that tuned in. Appreciate it. And uh, stay tuned. Hopefully, we should do some lives next week, hopefully in Scotland. So, Salancha. Dummies. Dummies.